More rain, y'all. More mud. I'm gonna go down there and feed my chickens. Check my greenhouse, it's been super warm. I've not even had to turn my stove on last night. It's crazy. Um, let's see, we are at 62 in here, which is pretty good. We've not had any sun at all today, so that's pretty warm. It's probably pretty close to that outside. Tomorrow, I think it's even supposed to be near 70, but it's supposed to rain. So, yeah. After that, I think we've got some colder temperatures coming in. It looked like 30s and possibly 20s through the night. So throughout the next maybe 10 days. So I'll be firing up the pellet stove back up. But I've got some seeds to start. And so I'm coming down here to look at my plants. See what needs to be watered. Look at that, y'all. Isn't that pretty? That succulent has just really put out a beautiful little bloom. Love it. And look at that one. Oh, that is so neat. It just doesn't even look real. I just, I love it. Let's go see what kind of seeds I've got. Now, I want to start some herbs. I told y'all I want to, I want to grow herbs this year. I want to put them in a lot of stuff that I can. I picked up these seeds from my grocery store. I normally like to go and get seeds, like from my local nursery. But I haven't been there yet, just because I've been sick and everything. So, I got these. They were an organic seed. Um, we'll start these. I may go pick up some of the Baker's Creek or some of the others that are at my um, local nursery greenhouse that I go to, and we'll just do both. <laughs> Can't ever do too many, right? But I'm going to go ahead and start some of these. I've always wanted, I wanted oregano last year, and for some reason I had a really hard time finding it. And I like dill because my mom used this in her pickles last year, and I had to actually buy the herb in the grocery store that was already dried, and I want to do my own, so that's what I'm going to do. I've got cilantro. I've got parsley. I usually go by the Farmer's Almanac and it tells if you're doing seed starting indoors what date to start. And I think January 26th there were several things. So I'm going to start getting organized. I'm going to write stuff up here so I'll know when. I'll get my seeds out and get them ready. And they'll be, that way I'll have it all organized. Now y'all I'm going to start them in pots because I have a bunch of pots that my husband got me there. I've got them in storage. But I'm going to put them in here so I can water and the water will drain out into this. I'm going to clean these out. But underneath here, I have seed starting mats. And they will keep it, the soil warm, even on the cooler nights. And we'll put some domes over them while they're getting started. I'm going to plug my mats up. I have my lights on timers, so they're not running all the time. Just kind of like a longer daylight hour type scenario. I'm going to go ahead and label these. I have like a fork that I'll stick down in here. I also do these for my garden as well. I think I'm going to do maybe five or six plants each because I'm going to do some for me and then some for my mom. These seeds are a quarter inch deep and nine inches apart. I think I'm going to put two in each pot just to make sure they come up. Kind of a bigger seed, not too tiny. All right, next is oregano. This is the one I had a little trouble finding last year and the seeds are so tiny. So I don't know how you get one seed in here. So I'm just gonna drop a few in here. Now these are 85 days to harvest, so almost three months. We're looking at February, March, April. Now, if you're wanting to plant these outdoors, you are gonna want to, in you're gonna to wanna to look at your zone. My zone is 7A, so it says to start these April through July. But since they're in a greenhouse, they can be started earlier. I'm gonna put a fork in here on the date that I have started these seeds, which is 118 of 23. That way we can kind of monitor where they're at on their germination. Headed down to the chickens. Gotta feed them real quick and then get back up to the house. We are headed out to go talk to somebody about another woodworking project that my husband's doing. Um, he's starting another Murphy bed, but it's a different one. And I think he's gotta go make sure that it's gonna fit in this guy's house because it's pretty big and I think it's going into his basement. So we gotta make sure it's gonna actually go in the door down there. Chicken! Hungry, 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 hungry. Get in there. 
Get in there. Get in there. I got one egg today. Slackers. Good afternoon. <laughs> My husband's really happy about the wind today. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> There's like gale force winds out here and it's like almost 70, so it's making him really happy. We got something. A few things. I'm sorry if the sound is probably terrible. Kickstarter fence and something in a box. We got some chicks, y'all. They're in the greenhouse. They're not gonna stay in the greenhouse. They're going down the hill, but we gotta set up real quick first. Get it ready for them. Look at my grill cover. I just left the smoker cover. It's crazy out here today. It's like spring in January. It doesn't need to be like that in January, I don't think. But anyways, all right, let's go get these chickens ready. Oh, we've got some Cochin Bantam Millie Fleur. And we've got some little frizzles. Little frizzle right there. Making a nice little cozy spot for them down here. Got my sweeter heater. It's rated for zero degrees, so it does really good down here. Super warm. I've grown out chicks down here before like this method, and it's done really good, so we're gonna try it again. Kind of block them off from the other chickens, and then we'll eventually open up the run again together. So, yeah. Exciting. Well, I was gonna get silkies, but I decided on the cochins. I just, they're easier. The silkies are so high maintenance. They're so cute, but I really love the Millie Fleur, so. Good afternoon. I hope you guys are having a great Friday. It's sunny. I'm so excited the sun's out. It feels so good in here. My vent fan is on, like for the first time in I don't know when. So it, feel, it just feels wonderful. It is 75 in here. Now it'd probably be in the 90s if I turned my vent fan off, but yeah, the plants need some of that air circulation. I think they'll appreciate that. So y'all, it's gonna be a busy weekend. Tomorrow we are starting the installation of our humongous 104 inch window. It's gonna be going way up there. Yeah, a little intimidating, but my husband he's got it he's doing it because we like to do most of the things on this house we built this house pretty much from the ground up we didn't have anybody do much of any of it there may have been just a couple things that we sourced out but really not much um, I think like the fireplace and maybe one other thing but anyways so we try to do most of the, most of the work ourselves it really um, saves a lot of money and we know that it's done right so I am fixing to go down to the chicken coop to check on the babies. It got down to 39 last night, and I went down there and checked on them last night. They seemed to be okay. I had a sweeter heater down there for them, which is rated for pretty cold temperatures. I need to go check on these littles and see how they're doing, and then I'm coming back to the greenhouse, gonna water, and then Seth and I have to go up and we have to take some stuff down and do a little bit of prep work for the window. So I don't know if I showed y'all yesterday, but we made like a little divider inside the run. It was so windy yesterday, we didn't sit down here too long. You probably wouldn't have been able to hear me talk. So I'll show you guys exactly what we did now that the gale force winds have stopped. So I bought some poultry netting, which is just like the really flexible, it's not metal, it's kind of a plasticky material. I've used it before, I really like it. It's easy to cut, it's easy to maneuver around, and we just twist tied it because I only had wire this far because I made it open for all the birds. So I want to separate them from the big ones for a little while until they get some size on them, but I also want them to be able to interact. That way when I introduce them all together, they kind of know each other. At least that's the plan. We'll see how that goes. Um, chickens can tend to be kind of um, dominant. They do have like a hierarchy. There's always one that's the highest on the totem pole and depending on how aggressive they can be, they might, you know, pick at each other. But hens are usually not as bad. They still do it, but roosters, now they can be really bad. 
I do find that like some of the Bantam breeds are better. Some breeds are better than others. And sometimes if you're wanting like a couple roosters together, if you grow them up together and you have plenty of space, that can work. Sometimes it can, sometimes it don't. Even with, you know, the same, within the same breed. So it kind of just depends on the personality. You kind of have to keep a close eye on them. When they get to like mating age, that's where a problem can arise. So you just got to kind of keep a close eye. I've, I've had to rehome a few that kind of didn't get along with each other. And then I've had like another one with the same one that didn't get along that did fine with another one. So yeah, you just got to watch them. Oh, look at these littles. Aren't they adorable? They're so cute. Oh, they're adorable, y'all. So there are two that are frizzle and the other six are just smooths. And they are the Millie Fleur Coach and Bantam. And they are a chick starter. The rest of them are under my little heater. It's a very warm heater. It's rated for barns and things like that. We're taking the blinds, curtains, everything down in preparation for tomorrow. So if y'all can see how far down below that is. <laughs> Keep you updated. <laughs> 